Okay, on number eight, can you, it, can you assume that it completely, everything, like both products, I mean go, both reactants go to completion? This is the aluminum reactant with the oxygen? Yeah. Yeah, I, I looked at that. I thought I think uh, the question is maybe a little bit, bit ambiguous. Yeah. Bit, but I we know that we know that we're going to use up all the aluminum. Right. Um, and yeah, you can't solve it unless you assume that you're um, using up right. all the oxygen um, as well. Yeah. So they meant you to assume in this case that uh, we're going to use uh, we're going to uh, use up all of both of them. Otherwise, it's impossible. To solve so you convert it from grams to moles of both. Right. And then um, got the simplest whole number ratio. Right. I got, I mean, I got D. Right. Yeah, that's the other problem with this. Um, it looks to me like you can't actually figure out the molecular formula. All you can figure out is the empirical formula from the information that they gave you. Right. If, if, so what was the correct choice? I, I, we don't know because there wasn't an answer key. But I'm, I'm sorry, and what did you get? I got D. D. Right. So... What um, Number eight. Well, it's yeah, just... What, what's the... Uh, Aluminum is 27. Yeah, we should talk about that for a second. How did you get uh, D from that? Um, let's, let's just work that out. You want to take us a second? So let's try working that one out on paper. Okay, I did. Um, 54 gram aluminum mm -hmm. times one mole aluminum in, uh, in uh, 27 grams, and then... Good, that's the molecular uh, weight of aluminum. Right, and then I figured that out. I don't know what my work is. Um, is it? Sorry. So what does that come out to be? Right. 27 goes into 54 twice. Uh, two. But wouldn't, uh, is, isn't AL, because um, it's in the non-metals, wouldn't it be AL2? Oh, are you saying um, that it, it must be a diatomic aluminum that yes. you started with? Uh, let's see. First of all, I don't know if that if it even matters. I don't think it even uh, matters too much on this problem. Um, so uh, is aluminum a metal or a non-metal? Metal. Yeah, it's a metal, because uh, if you look at the periodic table, it's towards the left in the periodic table, right. right? So this is a metal. But actually, that doesn't really have much to do with whether it's atomic or uh, whether it's diatomic or not. The way to remember the things that are diatomic, which you should know for the class, are the things that are diatomic are all the elements that end in gen or ene. So for example, suppose that you have um, molecular oxygen. Well, a molecule of oxygen is not O. It's O2, because oxygen ends in G-E-N. Or let's say that you have a molecule of chlorine. Well, that's not Cl. That's Cl2, because chlorine ends in I-N-E. Chlorine, chlorine, chlorine. Oxygen. Oxygen, hydrogen. Hydrogen. Okay. Oh, that's a good this takes into account all of the diatomic okay. elements. So anything that ends in G or N is, um, is diatomic, and everything else is not diatomic. Well, aluminum, num is not one of these two suffixes. So um, you, you wouldn't really talk about a molecule of aluminum anyway because it's a metal. Um, and it does, aluminum doesn't actually form molecules uh, so much. But if you're going to talk about just metallic aluminum, you wouldn't write it as Al2. You would just write it as Al. Yeah. OK, so in this case, um, we were right just to be thinking about Al and not Al2. The key is not whether something's a metal or a non-metal, but whether it ends in ene or um, gen. For example, sulfur. Sulfur is a non-metal, uh, but it doesn't end in ene or gen, so it's not diatomic. Okay. And then um, you do you find the moles for oxygen, so you do 48 grams of oxygen times so divide by 32 because oxygen is diatomic. Well, you're doing something at 3, though. No, you get 1.5. Yeah, what should we divide by here? Um, 32. Oh, because it's diatomic? Yeah. It is diatomic, but I don't think that really matters. Whether things are diatomic or not was a detour for us here. I don't think that really matters. What we, uh, what we need to figure out is, is in how many oxygen atoms we have here. What we want to know is, so we know that um, 
16, there are 16 grams of oxygen atoms in one mole of oxygen atoms. We're not trying to count oxygen molecules because the problem isn't about oxygen molecules. Okay. Um, or, or, no, no, I'm sorry, Let, let's think here. So we have 48 grams of, okay, no, no, um, actually, you're right, this is O2. So I should write it like this. We've got 48 grams of O2, and maybe, maybe I was uh, wrong, and you're right. And one mole of O2, you were right, would be, so there's 32 grams of O2 in one mole, but then what we really care about is the number of atoms of oxygen. So then we'd have to convert from moles of O2 into moles of oxygen atoms. And what would be the conversion ratio here? Um, one, oh, two, okay, the two moles of oxygen and one mole of O2. One mole of uh, diatomic oxygen is going to yield two moles of oxygen atoms. And this is what we really care about here. We need to figure out how many actual oxygen atoms we uh, have. All right, so then we get back to what we would have had if we just put a 16 here in the first place. Although this is a better way to, to work it out. So, um, so this is going to be 2 goes into 32 16 times. 16 goes into 48 3 times. Um, the moles here cancel, the grams cancel, and we end up with three moles of oxygen atoms. Well, now, that means that we need to make a molecule that contains two aluminum atoms for every three oxygen atoms. So I think that we do end up with choice A is the correct answer. Okay. Now, like I said, the question is a little miswritten. They should have specified that all we're finding here is the empirical formula. We don't really know what the molecular formula is. The molecular formula could be Al4O6, for all we know. All we can do is figure out the ratios of the aluminum and the oxygen here. So we figured out the empirical formula. All right, so you're right that sometimes it, you do have to take into account when things are diatomic. Actually, it is a good idea to take into account this is diatomic, because oxygen gas is diatomic. But ultimately, what we cared about here were the number of atoms. Okay.